Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated returning after a short break, which you won't have noticed because I filmed or recorded so many episodes. And I've been putting them up over uh, the last while, every second day. I actually haven't played in about two weeks, I think, so that'll tell you how many episodes I had recorded. But uh, I wanted to kind of take a short bit of a break and let the episodes that I was uploading catch up with where I was in the game. So yesterday... I uploaded episode 16, if I'm correct. So you're not too far behind me now. Uh, a big thank you to everyone who's been commenting and who's been uh, leaving likes on the videos. Thank you very much for that. It helps to turn the eye of the YouTube algorithm upon my works. And that's really important for some reason. I'm not too sure why, but um, thank you all very much. Uh, I do have to give uh, a special mention to Michael Roberts, who a good couple of episodes back predicted that the Gardariki conquest of Bavaria would lead to the collapse of the Empire, and he was pretty much spot on. Here is the remnants of Novgorod. If we come up here and look at their homeworld, uh, Piskov is under is under attack, so somebody is going to uh, to strip that from them shortly. They'll be left with two counties up there then. Estonia. Estonia is actually under a bit of trouble, is it? Um, Tartu has uh, has split out. And there looks to be two different coloured Estonias for some strange reason. I'm not too sure. Not too sure why that is. But um, Estonia, who of course came to aid them in their attempted conquest of Athlone, uh, Estonia has now chipped a good chunk of land off of them as well, as has uh, this place here right next to them. So they held, I think they held most of this, and now it's all gone from them. So the uh, the prophecies of St. Michael, or the prophecies of St. Michal, came came true. And uh, we're witnessing basically the, the breakup of our greatest enemy, or they were our greatest enemy at one stage, but now, of course, attention has switched to the Swedish with their rather large army. Oh my god, that's gotten even bigger since uh, since the last time I remember this. They're up to 12,000 now. There's been um, a couple of changes since I played last, as can be kind of seen by the setup down here in the bottom left-hand corner. So the 1.1.1 patch has came out, and uh, the 1.1.2 hotfix as well. So the uh, the stress bar is down across the, the bottom of the screen now, instead of on the, the left-hand side. And also, the other massive change, look at this, our Archbishop got himself a new suit. He went out and went shopping, and he's got himself all dolled up. Look at this, a big Cossack with, uh, with Jesus nailed to a cross on it. Boys, oh boys, there's a man who's ready for the weekend. So I think that's pretty much the two... The two big changes that we can, we can kind of see in the UI at the moment. Um... They've been other, other UI changes as well. They don't really affect a game in progress too much. There's been some changes to the AI, which would have had interesting consequences in episodes past. So it'll be interesting to see what way they affect the game going forward. Um, I think there's been a change to how converting from tribal to feudalism works. So it was something I wasn't going to try initially, and it's now something... I'm thinking maybe of going for. And the other thing just to address really quickly is um, we're in the year 944. I'm thinking of keeping this playthrough going until the year 1000. And once we get there, then we'll see uh, what's, the, what's the plan. But uh, pretty much I'll just keep it going to the year 1000. Like I said, they still haven't patched in... Where are we going? Uh, they still haven't patched in the Pope as the head of insular Christianity. So um, I don't want to kind of go too far into the game before major, major changes are uh, are introduced. Towards the end of our last episode, we had a bit of a... a bit of a situation... Now, of course, when I began the seduction scheme against this person, first of all, I was only looking at the top half of the screen. Here is her, her liege. And if we click on the liege, we will see that she is a stepsister to our wife. What I didn't realize was that, um, was that the character that we seduced and had a baba with is also 
our wife's stepsister. I didn't I didn't actually notice that. So if we if we start here, here is our uh, wife. There is so there's her father, uh, who was a prince of Gwynedd, and here is her mother. She's currently in prison in uh, Countess. Uh, she's the mother of of Countess Astrid. She's imprisoned by Countess Asta. So here is here's Countess Astrid. Uh, so their mother is actually in Astrid's court, and um, here's Asta. So one of the sisters attacked the other sister and took their mother prisoner. This is oh man, there are so many red flags in this family. Another slightly interesting point, I think it's interesting, is here is their father. He died, he was slain in battle in 934. We had this guy in our prison at one stage. So he was a prisoner, I can't remember, was it of, I think it was Green Graffador. Uh, and we ransomed him. So there you go, small world. And if we look at his brother, so this is the, the Jarl of Jorvik. Uh, that's one of their brothers. And then if we look at the other brother, King Emmond, uh, his wife is the Queen of Wessex which is quite a large, a large area. And as you can see, all she has is daughters. So, Flancina, the big, oh, look at the big happy smile on him. Flancina, I'm sure, is uh, is basically taking quite an interest in his, his wife's extended family. Um, you might have seen in the last episode that... We got a little pop-up towards the end, a, an achievement. It kind of confused me because it, it happened when I was being blackmailed. And that was the achievement for having 10 secrets, knowing 10 secrets simultaneously. And you may have discerned that um, what I'm trying to do at the moment is going for the seduce 10 characters achievement. And we're two and a half characters deep at the moment. Bad use of terminology. Um, so this this character, she blackmailed us. She somehow discovered that Flan Sinna was the father of her child. I, I still don't understand how she discovered it. Um, just elite detective work. But what we're going to do is we're going to respond by... We're going to blackmail her. And there's a 100%... Um, uh, we, can't, we can't blackmail her and tell her, we know who your secret lover is. We can't do that, unfortunately. But we can uh, tell her, we know... Who the father of your child is, and she'd be like, "Oh no, how did you discover?" So we're gonna we're gonna blackmail her. This game has gotten weird. And before I begin, the last major thing that we have to do: we were raided by the Isles. We raised our army, gave them a bit of a baiting, and now what we're going to begin doing is um, raiding. Let's do some raiding. Now our our problem is that. Um, by keeping the army raised, we are losing a ginormous, almost five uh, prestige points per month by keeping the army raised. So we're going to get some raiding done really quickly. I'm probably going to split the army in a second and send them off in two different directions. I think uh, we should be able to take on these guys if they try to come after us. And you can see that what I've done is I have put Chieftain Koning as our new... Uh, the new leader of the actual army. So Briog now is just our marshal. He's he's shoving up in years. Um, his prowess has, has dropped a good bit, so I'm not putting him into battle anymore. And, of course, there is his daughter, his only child, who we we may we may have seduced in, in the last episode and then married off to one of our vassals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up. I'm going to wait for this army to move into the next county and then split them and it's going to take me a while to remember what exactly I was and wasn't doing in the last episode just to remember uh, I, I'm almost certain that I've made some marriage uh, proposals between various different knights and things there was a bug I think it's been fixed in the most recent patch that um, that people were turning up with uh, very low chances of of children uh, well, no chance of children in marriage uh, in marriage proposals. So I think that's been fixed, and um, I might I might uh, be able to actually. There's some important knights who I haven't married off because there was no chance of them having children. So I might be able to uh, to do something about that in a couple of seconds. But I'm going to wait and see what actual pop ups I get, demands at conversion, and uh, and what marriages that we have formed. 
And of course, very quickly, uh, we've gained a blackmail hook on our lover. And the very last thing I should say before we continue on, here is Scanlon. I have changed his education, not his focus, but I have changed his educator to uh, myself, to Flanzina. So he's going down the the intrigue direction, and I thought it is only fitting that he should be educated by the king himself. This is Scanlon Mock Green Graffador, the brother of Kukarkamur, who is his primary heir at the moment. Um, I forget who he's married off to. He's, he's married off... He's being married to my half sister, so again, he's marrying his cousin. He's uh, he's um, now doubly related to me, or he will be. But what I thought was interesting, the the reason that I was looking at Scanlon is because I was trying to figure out who the succession would go to. It's unlikely to go to Kukurka. Kukurka messed up by trying to depose Ruokon. If Kukurka had left Ruokon in place, Ruokon would have died in his sixties. Um, and Kukurka would probably have, have come to power after him. I think Kukurka has botched it for himself. But uh, Scanlon is a possible successor as a son of Green Graffador. And um, so I was, I was looking at him, but what I noticed is here's his, his father, Green Graffador, and his mother is right beside him. And she is currently married to Kukurka Moore. So following his father's death, Kukurka married his stepmother who's also the mother of his half brother that's that's irish politics for you so there he is there's kukarka looking happy out and of course he was uh kukarka was having an adulterous affair with a 62 year old woman two or three episodes back kukarka kukarka you're odd i don't know what to say about you So we've split the armies and we're moving them off in two separate directions. The Isles are shoving out into the sea. I wonder what they're going to do. We continue our attempts to seduce Orla. This is our uncle's lover, if I am correct. There's, uh, there's Arkad. And, um... Her stats aren't really telling me much. I'm probably going to go with uh, something religious, because it's pretty much her best stat other than military, so we'll we'll give a chance at that. Okay, so the AI isn't fully fixed. They embarked, sailed down here, sailed back up, and have gotten back into land. So they just basically paid money to go for a bit of a boat ride from one square to another. And apparently, Orla wants more reading. So again, it's informative, entertaining, and religion. Let's go with the uh, with the holy book. There was a ninety percent success chance there. I think. Uh, where have these guys gone? I do remember in the previous episode that I said I was going to switch back and forth between these two trees. Now, scheming would have been helpful to me in learning secrets, and I've gotten that achievement. So. Um, the seducer one, the seduce 10 courtiers is going to take a, a lot longer, or to seduce 10 anybody. So I think I'm actually going to, to focus on this tree to, uh, to help Flancina with his, with his goals. And we will go for graceful recovery, so you can no longer critically fail seduction schemes. I don't think we've ever critically failed one, but let's not start. And actually, while I'm here, I had been thinking about what we were going to do. Like Flansena, he's he's a seducer. He'd already started off on the on the seduction path when we when we got hold of him. He's definitely a schemer. I didn't see him as a torturer. Now there is a, an achievement for the uh, for the torturer tree. I was thinking he'd probably switch to something else, more than likely diplomacy or maybe even stewardship to um, to get the golden obligations and maybe some of the um, some of the money generating stuff. Then again, he is paranoid, and who knows what twisted directions his mind will go in as he ages. So, um, so I might actually also go for that that tree. Uh, I was trying to think what his motivations would be for for going in that direction, but uh, like I said, who knows? Who knows where the future will carry him? I'll tell you this game. Um, 
I don't know what's going on here. These guys are not raiding. I'm not entirely sure why not. They are set to raiding, just in case somebody thinks I'm uh, I'm losing my mind. And there is stuff there to raid. Um, yeah, I I have no idea. So there there goes our raiding effort. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull them back into into Irish territory uh, and see see what we can do. We did make some money off of our steward, though, so at least somebody's making money. Jesus, Orla, get a library or something. Orla wants more readings. Like, is this all she's doing? Is she just intrally reading books? It's not telling us whether we're actually succeeding or not. So, will we go with something else? Will we go with something entertaining or informative? Um... Let's go with something entertaining, just, just to see if something different happens. We could be witnessing uh, a couple of hiccups due to the fact that this is an Iron Man save continuing on after the introduction of the patch. Maybe, maybe that's what's happening. Okay, so we've gotten some progress, but in the wrong direction. So I clicked on the third option, because I got another one, a fourth reading in Tralee, and um, yeah, she didn't like that one. It wasn't the religion one. Um, but some other dude likes me. That's fantastic. It looks like uh, maybe he was a knight, or maybe we just married him off because there was no other chance of anybody else generating children, so... There you go. The other big news is that our brother, Loch Nan, has created a faction to install himself as the High King of Ireland. So he's trying to take our throne. Loch Nan would have been... What's going on in his head? Because I feel that it was him who pushed Kukurka to start the civil war against Ruokon. If Geralt had ruled as High King, so if his father had been High King... It would have made him eligible for succession in future. So, uh, well, I won't say it would have made him eligible, but he would have been the leading member of the family, of Garrel's descendants. So, Flancina, who I'm playing uh, as at the moment, is a count, uh, or a, a chief, and Loch Nawn is the high chief of Connacht. So, basically, Loch Nawn would have been, or his descendants, would have been the um, the prime representatives of Geralt's family. Flan Sinna has pulled that away from him by going for the kill, basically, and contributing to Ruokon's ill health and sending him uh, poisoned coins. So, Loch Nawn, I'd say, and of course Loch Nawn also hasn't been given a seat on the council, so I'd say he's pretty pissed. So he's established a faction. It's not, it's not all that strong at the moment, and there are a lot of people... Um, Kukurka, who would be the largest landholder in the kingdom, he can't join, and neither can Koning, because we actually have an alliance with him, and Koning, again, would be another very powerful um, uh, member of the kingdom. So two of the most powerful people can't join him, so Loch Nawn is kind of uh, isolated at the moment. Well, all of those book readings in Tralee did something for her. As the shadows lengthen, I find Orla in the darkness beneath the castle wall, waiting for me. Uh, instead of taking her as a lover, we are going to take the castle and then withdraw. So, uh, we gain 20 opinion. Uh, end the scheme to seduce her, and has happened, you lay with Orla Uvorda. So, we're in a position to start a new scheme to uh, to seduce somebody. But what we're going to do is we're going to stay closer to home for a while. Uh, here is our wife. She's evil and craven. And she, of course, is the, um, basically, the, the, the Jarl of Iceland. I didn't realize that this was going to happen, but there you, you go. It did happen, so what we are going to do instead of... I was thinking we could probably try to seduce her uh, and make her our lover. And it would count towards our... Um, our... Uh, 
our total judo. I was I was thinking of romancing instead. I think we'll seduce her. I think we'll seduce her. Uh, there's only a 60% chance that we will succeed in seducing our wife. But I think it would be important um, to have her as our wife and to get some children to put an e-nail on the, the throne of Iceland. I'm not too sure what went wrong there a while ago, but um, they're, they're sieging down. Our troops are sieging down uh, this settlement now, which only has a, a handful of people on it. Uh, the the isles we're now hostile towards them. They're going to go back out into the into the sea to see what they can see. And what we're going to do is probably turn the army around and march back up and see if we can siege down those areas again. We have received an alert about indiscretions as Countess Astrid's belly grows. There can be no doubt she is with child. She has said nothing, but could this be the result of our carnal relations? What? Um, I think Flancena is the type of suspicious person that he would ask her about it himself. So I imagine that we... What? Like, we get on the boat? We get on the boat from... Maybe uh, the Isles. I was I was just about to start talking about the Isles. I have no idea where they're going. We're raiding their land at the moment. But maybe, uh, yeah, we've gotten from Desmond. We've gotten on the boat for the Isles. They've taken us over to Wales. We've gone all the ways up here to, um, to West Riding. And we've asked her and she shouted at the top of her lungs, Of course it's yours, Flanzina. I worry that someone will have overheard her. But we remain alone with the silence. Good it is too, for I suddenly have a lot to think about. The two of us? A child? How could this have happened? The secret stays hidden for now. And we have a scheme at court. Uh, my spy master has come to me with grave news. Uh, someone is plot plotting to kill my uh, champion. Hmm. We can't see why anyone would be planning to kill him. He is one of our... Well, he's not one of our better knights, but he does... He does appear every once in a while as a possible commander. Well, there you go. Someone's trying to kill him. So yeah, this is a, a rather odd marriage. In my pursuit of my wife's affections, it would be very helpful to know exactly what her tastes and preferences are. Yeah. I wonder have we ever even spoken. Um, I think we're just going to go with the 72% chance that we will succeed... Or there's an 80% chance. My spies will uncover this in no time. My spies will spy on my wife. We'll, we'll go with this, because it's just a slightly less creepier version. I am sure I could actually have a conversation with my wife. And we have learned that our wife is a woman of fine taste. This will help me win her affection. Well, this is awkward. First thing is, I remember this garden. This is where we uh, we overheard Donal's wife. I actually have to check on Donal. Uh, Donal's wife and one of our cousins discussing uh, Ruokon, or where Green Graffador heard them and um, and had them imprisoned, and accidentally they died. But um, apparently we have been having a conversation with her about various poisons and their application. Her point of view is intriguing, yet it is her passion for the subject which I admire the most. The deeper she delves, the more animated she becomes. And those beautiful eyes of her... Those eyes of her are positively glowing. I think I could listen to her forever. So the two options are... We'll deal with the options first of all. Uh, Astrid, I think I love you. So she becomes our soulmate. Or, how interesting. Could you explain one more time? Um, before looking at the options, this is the one I was thinking of going for. Because I just imagine Flancina and his paranoia just... Yeah, okay, poisons. Okay, tell me, tell me again about the applications. Um, I think he'd be most interested in that. The other, the other rather aux thing is that um, she's after getting betrothed to a grandson of Princess Onbrast. Not entirely too sure how to, uh, how to pronounce that, but if we take a look at who that is, 
I don't know if you remember this, uh, this lady, but she should have a claim on Dublin. Or she's a claim on Breffney anyway. Um, oh no, she wouldn't have a claim on Dublin, but she was the liege of whoever controlled Dublin. Um, and I think this is one of the, the main places where the Cathar heresy started. So what must Flansen be thinking? Because soon enough, a Welsh Cathar is going to be bringing up his various spawns. There's a second baby coming, so so this guy is going to be bringing up uh, bringing up the children soon enough. And she's she's a known fornicator as well. So um, so there you go. I think we're just going to go. With how interesting? Could you explain one more time? We're going to get 500 uh, intrigue lifestyle experience. So that'll contribute uh, greatly towards our next goal of. Um, not entirely too sure what we're going for next. I think we might just focus on the seduction tree. Well, there goes the dream of Aninale Iceland. She has been murdered, but we don't know who it was. There was no notification that there was a murder plot. Uh, she died under mysterious circumstances. Uh, so this is our Icelandic wife. We were hoping that she would have a son that would sit as the Jarl of Iceland and that could possibly, in future, inherit or be elected to the kingship and unite the two entities and that's gone out the window. I hope you find peace. So we're going to get a good chunk of stress. That's going to drive us over the edge into our first level of stress. And again, what must Flan Sinna be thinking? This is a a strike that is close to his heart. I think it was one of her brothers, whoever whoever will have inherited Iceland from her, because um, uh, her her heir was one of her two brothers. I think that's who carried out this murder. But Flan Sinna with his paranoia, might see something different in it, and he might think that this attack was aimed at him. Uh, so we've been overwhelmed by stress. Um, is he after getting depressed or something? Um, with the death of my departed wife, High Queen Sif, my plans for our future no longer matter. Uh, whatever may once have been is now dead. So I, I presume that's the... Um, that's the scheme to seduce her gone. Yeah, it'd be yeah, yeah, it'd be awkward if we if we kept if we kept up that scheme. Yeah, it'd be awkward. Oh boys. Oh, he's having a full He's having a full episode. Oh lads. Life has never been easy, but it feels like the loss of my wife Sif has pushed me over the edge. She was my partner in life, helping me get through so many trials and tribulations. You didn't even... You had to send spies to figure out what she liked. Cop on. Though we may have had disagreements, facing life without her just feels... daunting. How will I ever manage without her? Drink. Drink is always an option. Is a life without her in it even worth living? Uh, so, melancholic. Lose 66 stress. Now, what does melancholic do? I don't know if I've explained my my middle mouse button uh, won't activate the uh, the action lock, so I have to wait for it to to actually lock on. Uh, diplomacy goes down, Marshall goes down, Stuart, everything goes down. Ev all of the things go down. Uh, a drink to remember her and a drink to forget. Um, let's see, drunker two to stewardship, two to prowess, tiny penalty to health. Yeah, I must press on. It's what you would have wanted. Uh, frozen grief. Minus two to diplomacy. Personal scheme power goes down. Do you know what? I think it's most... Yeah, I can see him becoming a, a paranoid drunk. So there you go. Uh, he's... And do you know what? It's fitting his father was a drunkard. Garrett was a drunkard. So I think it's it's quite obvious that uh, Flansina in his, in his deep dark moments with his dead wife's eyes staring at him would uh, turn to drink. Now we got a, an odd little pop-up here. Our Archbishop can no longer continue to convert faith in county. And if we come over here, it's been converted. So there you go. Not entirely too sure um, why 
did it just happen all of a sudden? We're going to send him... We're going to send him uh, here, because this is lands that belonged to Green Graffador. So it belonged to Congus. Congus got this county when he was elected as the King of Alba. On his death, it went to his father, Green Graffador, and on Green Graffador's death, it went to his son, Kukurka, and Kukurka has given it to this dude, who is a Cathar, and he won't, um, he won't convert, and it's going to, well, he will, but he wants money, and I told him no, so I can't force him to convert for a while, so we're going to, we're going to convert the county from under his feet, at the very least. Isn't this very interesting? Sif's brother... Borstein now sits as the the Earl of all of this region. Isn't that very interesting? Hmm. Now here's something interesting. First of all, why am I trying to arrange a marriage between Drunk Flansina and his wife's stepsister, who's also the stepsister of the stepsister that he's had two children with don't ask questions like that but um here's something interesting she won't accept minus 1000 percent or minus 1000 um of a chance and the reason is countess asta's faith does not allow uh, polygamous so here's something new a, a lot of people had been pointing out that um that basically it didn't really make a lot of sense that you know, the, the the emperor of... The Holy Roman Emperor would send his daughter to be wife number four to a, to an Irish count or an Irish duke. And, uh, yeah, possibly this is what they've done to, um, to deal with that, is that they have put in this absolutely ginormous penalty. I had actually been thinking about trying to basically marry both of these stepsisters and uh, and put Enail uh, sons, legitimate Enail sons, on just as much land in England as could possibly uh, be done for the crack. There's no better reason to do anything. Well, that's not going to happen. And also we can see that there's another crusade that the, um, that the polygamous-hating Catholics are losing. That's what you get for not letting the Irish have their fun. Yeah, so it looks like there's been a, a big interesting change. Here is, um, I don't think this is arranged marriage. It should be fine spouse. It is fine spouse. And if we come to alliances, um, so everything, everything is turned off. Basically, it's just the, the default settings. And these are all the people that we can marry. And almost every single one of them, bar one, is insular Christian. So it does not look as though we can marry a Catholic anybody. So that would have had dramatic effects on the the, the early game because it was those alliances. That's really uh, all that, that kept us going was those alliances into, into uh, Europe. So... Um, yeah, I'm not entirely too sure what uh, what to do or to say going forward. We finished sieging down Ross. We've taken a prisoner. We're going to move this army further north. This one will be ready to follow in a, uh, a second. Uh, a faction targeting us has been disbanded. I wonder why that could be. Uh, there's some stuff up there as well. He's still alive at least. Uh, I thought maybe he died or something. Yeah, it just looks like he didn't get enough support. Better look next time, Lachnon. I am making a conscious effort not to start every sentence with so. And also, uh, I'm trying to uh, come up with something other than so. We have another interesting prisoner in our hotel. But we do. We do have another interesting prisoner in our hotel. Dervigol. So it's the start of Dervila. And then you have the goal in there, which again is... Um, is um, I think I explained this before, that it's basically a foreigner. So Dunanaul, the, the fort of the foreigners. And um, Dovgol, the black-haired foreigners. Or the dark-haired foreigners. And the Fiangol, the fair-haired foreigners. 
I, I've never actually heard this name before, but it's the start of Dervila and Gaul at the end of it. She is the daughter and heir to a county that we just raided down. She's Gaelic, but she's Norse pagan. Um, so what I'm thinking of is that we recruit her, we demand her conversion, and we marry her off to a distant member of the family. Not a distant member of the family, it doesn't make much of a difference. But hopefully we would be able to keep the Gaelic culture alive and possibly get an e-nail on the throne at some point in time. Dear God, Flancina is depraved. Not me, Flancina. This is... <clears throat> this is Flancina talking. Dervigal has accepted. She had very little choice. And we're going to marry her off to... Kukenvahar, Mach Riacon, and Riacon was the son of Mol Shocknail, and Mol Shocknail was the son of uh, Green Graffador. No, he was the son of uh, Flancina, the first Flancina. I'm getting mixed up between all of these characters. So, what is he? Is he a great grandson of the original Flancina? Uh, his father died in battle, and his father. Uh, Maul Shocknail was killed in battle. Uh, I think I think um, Riacon was killed fighting against us, wasn't he? Wasn't he slain? Was he slain in the? I can't remember. Do you know what? There's been so many so many people dead at this stage. Anyway, we're going to marry the two of them off, and um, possibly one day he will. Well, no, she'll be the Countess of Ross, and um, they will have. Maybe a Gaelic insular baby that will sit on the uh, sit as a count, and that'll that'll contribute to our splendor and things like that. And maybe even act as a as a um, an inside agent for the spread of insular Christianity. So Mol Shocknail, the Count of Oriel, has accepted his um the request that his brother his legitimized uh, bastard brother uh, marry the countess or the future countess of ross hopefully all going well how many episodes is it going to be before that pays off so our bishop is being bold and Insider Christianity's fervor has dropped by 10, and Angus has lost a level of devotion. Angus, stop being bold. Our lover, Countess Astrid, has given birth to a daughter, Glod. Of uncertain stock, it is terrible for an unmarried woman and her child, yet I cannot let it be known that I am the true father. Oh, what will become of my daughter? Well, she's going to be raised by a, uh, a Welsh Cathar soon enough. For now, like her mother, she's uh, Norse Catholic, but she's going to be she's going to be raised by a by a, a Cathar soon enough. A scandal in waiting. And just very quickly, while I'm looking at my extended family, uh, I can't remember when this happened. It was only quite recently, two years ago. Katrina, the matriarch of the family. She had two children who ended up... Uh, well, she had two children with King Helgi, who took her as a concubine when he captured her in a siege of Athlone, but she drank herself to death at 74 years of age. So, almost a decade uh, older than her father and uh, outlived a, a good chunk of her family but uh, yeah drank herself to death and here we see her children so her daughter was married off to the king of Ghana uh, to get them into a war against us at one stage and her son um, did have children so he has daughters one of them is ruling I think is um, I think she is a county she has uh, Kammersburg which is what he got so they, the, the line does continue. Her children or her descendants are still still around the place, but they're uh, Bavarian Waldensian and uh, Bavarian Waldensian. So all the, all the Norse is gone out of them. 
By and large, we finished our raiding in the north of Scotland. I'm going to just wait for this ongoing raid to finish and then bring them down, and then we'll see what we're doing from there. Um, a peasant revolt has broken out in the Inner Hebrides, which, of course, includes... Uh, are we going to are we gonna hit these guys? That includes um, Iona. So it'll be interesting to see, to see what happens there. Uh, these guys were just kind of standing around in a in a bad position. Didn't manage to raid anything off of them. I thought maybe they'd have something uh, something to give us. And um, oh, I don't think we had any uh, any um, knights in that uh, in that section by the looks of it. Uh, we've been called to war. Oh yeah, we're allied to Middlesex, aren't we? Uh, so I know also now that there's a penalty in for refusing to accept wars. When's the last time that we refused to accept a war? Of course we will accept. I don't exactly know who you are. I'm sure somebody is married to you. But um, yeah, of course we'll we'll uh, we'll accept. We're bringing our soldiers back to onto Irish soil, and uh, we'll get them prepped and ready to. We don't have much of a journey, I don't think. Uh, that's not too bad. Get them, get them down there, and see if we can earn some prestige for ourselves. Flansina has been feeling dejected and paranoid since the murder of his wife. He has consoled himself with drink, but you know what? It's time to get back up on the horse. And oh, maybe that was a bad choice of a bad choice of words. He has been searching around for um, big, strong Norse women. I think that's kind of becoming his type. Maybe he's looking for for somebody to replace Sif. And here is a chiefess in a in Inverness which borders us. Uh she too is a fornicator. So we'll start the scheme. 35% chance of success, not great at the moment. But we're not too far off of getting a uh, an upgrade to our seduction schemes that will that will help us uh, going forward. So probably he noticed her in reports that were coming back to him about how the uh, the army has been faring in Scotland. Our ward, High Chieftain Scanlon, has come of age. So he's not the High Chief of much. He is the High Chief of Leinster and the Earl of Ossery. And we saw a good couple of episodes back that the only other county in Leinster... Leinster itself, was actually taken by the Duke of Munster, or the High Chief of Munster. So um, he doesn't have a huge, a huge amount of, of uh, land or anything, but he has come of age. And uh, under our tutelage, he has become an intricate web weaver. So I think he's actually better than us, is he? Yeah, he's, uh, he's better than us. And he's a potential successor. He's, he's somebody that Flan Tusina... I didn't see that before. Flan Tusina. Oh no. Um, it should be Flan Sinna too. But anyway. Um, potentially Scanlon is a successor. So we might we might see might see about how, how that goes. So until we meet again Scanlon. And of course he's marrying our half sister. Yeah. Until we meet again Scanlon. Until we meet again, your cousin, High Chieftain Scanlon, created the faction to install Aileen on the Irish throne against you. And the other faction has been disbanded, uh, Lyachnon's faction. So let's let's see how things look now. Who even is this? Is he... he's heir to three counties. And... Um, yeah, so they want he wants her on the throne for some reason. Is she even related to you? Oh yeah, she's your uh, sister, all right. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. The other the other thing I, I also forgot to point out is that um, Chieftain Kukarkamur has had a son, who he named Green Grafador Mak Kukarkamur. It should be Mak Kun Kurka, so C U N, uh, is is how the name changes when you're son of. Somebody whose name starts with Koo. But uh, yeah, oh no, what is he? He's um, he's delicate. But uh, Green Graffador, his name lives on. A strong mythological Irish name. After a great 
uh, mythological leader. <clears throat> so many pop-ups, so many pop-ups. I didn't even have chances to uh, to cancel half of them. 36 gold and some prestige. Uh, a neighboring ruler has lost a war. So that's the those the Cathars and the um, and Jorvik or something like that. More loot, 33 and 33. There's the uh, the two factions. And our our sweetheart, High King Flancina, my dear little firebrand. My regrets that it has come to this. I know all about your secret. Oh my god, no. Somebody must be telling her. How is she how is she finding this out? If you wish for my silence, you will do as I say. We get a weak uh, she gets a weak hook on us. She has somehow discovered again that we are the father of her other child. I don't I don't understand how she uh, she keeps doing this. Um so her weak hook I think has just been replaced with another weak hook. Well, Two can weak hook. Okay, apparently not. <laughs> I was, I was going to try and um, I was going to try and blackmail her for um, for another for another hook, just pointlessly. So we have two options here: remove your attraction penalties or the plus twenty five. Uh, I think we will go for that one. So it gives us a plus 25% success chance to uh, seduction schemes. We have one in place at the moment. I think it's a 30 or a 35. So that should bring it up to a 50 or a 55. If I can maths. Can I maths? 55 to 60. I can't maths. Our allies have been ambushed by a rather hefty... Well, well for them it's a rather hefty... Um, army and there's another group coming in to hit them so we're going to I'm wondering now if we try and march them down here will it no it won't I thought it might uh, it might have put them out to sea but there come our two armies we'll keep them separate for now and we're gonna march them down and uh, and see what happens well isn't this nice we've learned that chiefess uh, Malmfrid is very close to her mother so we can basically bribe the mother to try to get into her married daughter's pants the next time we meet Malmfred offers me a wider smile than usual when the hell would I ever meet with the Norse ruler of an enemy neighboring territory there you go maybe there's like I don't know weekly rulers meetings or something or maybe there's um, a convention so anyway she smiles because i paid her mother 50 quid so she's happy out that's basically all the money we got from raiding all the money we earned from raiding we put it towards trying to seduce somebody whose land we probably raided to get that money in the first place i got a pop-up that my daughter orla was without an educator and uh, what I've decided to do, she's a daughter of Dovlema, well, Orla Nick Dovlema, it would be Orla Nick Flansina, but anyway. She's a daughter of Dovlema, who was a daughter of Ruokon, and um, so what we're going to do is educate her to be intrigue focused, and she will have the best tutor in the kingdom, and by the best I mean... Not really the best, but uh, yeah, we will educate our daughter in the ways of intrigue and seduction. Ooh, this is weird. And so with our armies ambling slowly southwards, I think that's a good place to leave it for today's episode. An interesting one. I came back from a lengthy break and was slowly but surely getting back into the episode and also dealing with uh, quite a lot of changes in the game itself, which have altered the way that um, that I'm going to have to proceed in future. It would make a replay of this game very interesting, because it would make the, the, the early years of uh, Flansena the first rule quite interesting. His inability to marry into the um, into any of the major families in Europe. It would possibly push for a... A reform of the religion 
possibly to, to reform away from polygamous marriage. And um, that's kind of what you saw historically, was that as soon as the, the, uh, the religion was introduced to Ireland, there were pushes for a full implementation of Catholicism, and this kind of happened very slowly over time. There was still major reforms going on in the early 1100s, up until the 1150s, 1158, I think there was a, a major synod, or synod, and um, that's 1158, and then in 1169, the Normans invaded. So right up to the very end of absolute Gaelic rule, um, there were still massive uh, reformations and changes going on within insular Christianity, uh, reforming it away from insular Christianity. But it's been an interesting episode. Our dreams, our dreams of somebody getting to ask somebody, um, do you want to build a snowman? Those dreams are gone. I'm not too sure what's going on up there. Maybe maybe they're involved in this war against us. Uh, I might check that out at the start of the next episode. And um, poor Flansena, really the only progress that we've made in this entire episode is that Flansena has become an alcoholic. That's literally all that happened in this episode. I had fun. Thank you for joining me. And I will talk to you all on the next one.